What is up everybody and welcome to my review of the fourth Bad Boys film titled Bad Boys Ride or Die. Now I've been a lifelong fan of this franchise. My dad took me to see the first two of them in theaters. They have always been movies that we've enjoyed and bonded over. I was pretty much like everybody else on planet Earth, genuinely shocked how good the last one was. I think that uh, Bad Boys for Life is actually the best of the three up to that point. And now we have this fourth film, Bad Boys Ride or Die, which is essentially telling the story following up off of some of the events of Bad Boys for Life, where Captain Howard was assassinated about halfway through that film, seemingly just to get back at Will Smith's character, Mike. And in this one, they're uncovering this whole corruption plot line where supposedly Captain Howard was the one who had ties to the cartel members and drug runners all along. Marcus and Mike get tied up into all of that end up going on the run as fugitives themselves and are trying to clear their captain's name. Now as I said I've enjoyed all of these movies but a couple of things did give me a little bit of pause with the trailer to Ride or Die. It still looked like it was going to be a lot of fun. It still looked like it was going to be a movie that I would enjoy and a lot of the things that I enjoy about Bad Boys movies was going to carry over to this one but I was a little concerned about the humor. Some of the jokes in the trailers weren't quite landing for me. Some of it seemed a little bit sillier so I was slightly hesitant until I started to see all of this massive praise coming out of all the early screenings with pretty much everybody universally saying this is another great Bad Boys film another one that's in competition for the best of the franchise. So then I got really excited. Now, just like our titular bad boys, Marcus and Mike, it's important to have that ride or die in life, that thing that will always be there for you and make you feel better no matter what goes on. And it's important that you also are there for them, namely our four-legged fur babies. So if you're a dog owner and you wanna give them a diet that's gonna make their tail wag every single day, then check out the sponsor of today's video, Sundays for Dogs. Many of you know that I'm a proud father of three wild children, but the more accurate statement is that I'm the proud father of five wild children. Yeah, my two dogs are just like two more children to me, and I try to treat them as such. And one of the most difficult things is providing my three children with delicious, healthy meals every single day while relegating my two fur babies to dry, unappealing kibble. And they don't seem to care for it too much themselves because my boy has a pretty sensitive stomach that fires back at us once in a while, and my girl looks up at you with those puppy dog eyes every time you have any real food out in front of her. Luckily, I found Sundays for Dogs. Sundays uses real human grade food that you can understand, pronounce, and even eat yourself. Most dog foods that go for this type of quality have a lengthy process attached, like storing it in the fridge or preparing it much like you would a meal for yourself. Well, Sundays are these air dried jerky like strips that don't have to be defrosted or prepped in any way. Just open the bag and chow down. And their gentle air drying process locks in all of the nutrients and flavor while saving you prep time. And as all dog owners know, starting a new food is a big deal. So luckily Sundays offers samples. Give your dog the chance to try Sundays and fall in love and all you you have to pay is shipping and handling. Then when you're ready, get 50% off of your first order of Sundays. Go to sundaysfordogs.com slash Cody or use code Cody at checkout. And thank you so much to Sundays for sponsoring today's video. Starting off with the positives for Bad Boys Ride or Die, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence's chemistry has not faded whatsoever. These two guys are just electric on screen. They're comedic back and forth, their uh, joking nature towards each other, even that brotherly love bond that they always explore in here. It's just as effective now as it was back in the 90s when the first one came out. They are the main stars, the draws of these movies whenever we go to see them. And it's good to find out that the big thing that keeps bad boys bad boys has not faltered. The action's really exciting. There's a lot of really interesting camera work in here. There was one like behind the scenes shot that I kept getting seen shared around uh, social media before I even saw the film where they were doing this first person shooter kind of POV where they essentially strapped a camera rig to Will Smith and Martin Lawrence that's attached to a gun and it swings around. So they swing the camera this way if you wanna have a shot looking down at Marcus or Mike and they swing it around this way if they want the camera to show the POV first person person shooter aspect with the gun. That was a really cool one. There's a number of other camera tricks that they use to kind of change perspective and keep things a little bit frantic and chaotic during action scenes. This is something that these directors did very well in the, ba the previous film, Bad Boys for Life, and they carry that over here. It's the one thing that makes me eternally curious 
to see what their Batgirl film was gonna turn out like. Because if they can do cool stuff like this with cameras and to make their action scenes stand out from a franchise that has had a plethora of standout action scenes, I wanna see these guys continue to do more stuff. I also appreciate the personal story here. As somebody who has been a lifelong fan, the fact that they, they never really get rid of the importance of past characters, whether they're dead or not, or past events, is something that I always appreciate. So the fact that Joe Pantoliano's character despite being deceased is very much the lifeblood of the story. He's the one that is driving the motivations of the main characters and driving the plot. And you really feel a lot of emotional investment in Marcus and Mike in trying to clear this guy's name. I mean, he was always kind of more of a comedic relief captain in the first two films and most of the third one where he's just shouting at them and, you know, drinking Pepto-Bismol and whiskey and sucking at basketball. You never really realize how much of an emotional tie those characters had until until he's deceased and now they have to do whatever they can to preserve his name and preserve his legacy. So I appreciate the fact that we have a movie and a franchise that's inherently over the top and silly and goofy and action and comedy, but they always maintain the characters, the human elements of them. Another big positive in this movie, Reggie. That's all I'm gonna say. And the final positive is that I've continued to enjoy all of the Ammo Team characters. Now, not every single one of them have carried over from the third film, but the ones that do are still a welcome presence. When you have a franchise like this where there's two main characters that pretty much all of us want to see in just about every single scene, they're the ones that we're here for, it's nice for them to be able to bring in these new side characters, these new younger elements into the fold that still maintain our interest, that still get some good laughs, that still have good chemistry with, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence so I still enjoy what they're starting to build out with this ammo team and really just all the side characters in general in the bad boys universe namely Reggie moving on to the mixed aspects I was uh, I, I honestly lean mixed negative on how they have characterized the Marcus character in this fourth film now I've always been kind of up and down with how they have continued to build out that character since the first film in the original bad boys for me Martin Lawrence and Will Smith all had very similar attitudes you know Will Smith was a little more wild and of course he had the family man aspect with Marcus but they were both badasses they were both hard-edged and ever since the second film they've always tried to do things to like soften Marcus with the spiritual stuff and the woosah and the third film he kind of has has this religious awakening and doesn't want to put any more violence into the world and in this one they basically go for two consistent gags throughout the film with his character the fact that he always wants to eat candy and junk food and the fact that he's had some kind of like premonition from beyond the grave that he cannot die that you know there's some kind of a divine intervention thing going on with him and I don't know, it just seems so silly at this point. Like, I like Marcus to be a hard-edged badass alongside Will Smith. You know, Will Smith is always going to be the bigger badass. He's always going to be the more wild one, a little bit more of the, the, the smoking gun of the two, if you will. But I like Marcus being just as hard-edged, being a bad boy. And for me, they just way too often try to put some form of humor in there to make him a little too goofy for my taste, a little too silly, and it just doesn't completely work for me, most of all in this fourth film, because those two things that they go for are this consistently recurring jokes that maybe get a laugh out of you once or twice throughout the film, but the rest of it just kind of comes across as goofy. And moving on to the negatives, this is kind of just bouncing off of that. Uh, there's a lot of humor in this movie that was way too silly for me, and that's exactly what I was worried about when I saw the trailers. I was hoping maybe they were just putting a few things in the trailer that weren't going to work for me, but the rest of the film was going to be filled with a lot of really solid humor. You know, most of the best jokes of m the previous three films are not in the trailers. This one, I feel like their best jokes were in the trailers, and a lot of the other ones, while I did have some genuine laughs in the film, it's still funny, it's still enjoyable, they just go for way too silly. There's just way too much of like a, almost a slapstick approach to what is going on here, where you have this very emotionally driven story, you have these high stakes, you have death, 
and they're just goofing around the entire time. Now, you gotta have that balance. You have to have them somewhat not taking things seriously and, and sending it up and having a good time with it, but I think they went too far with it here. Now, luckily, in that regard, the movie does get better as it goes along. The first 30, 40 minutes, I thought, was, was pretty rough on the humor front, but after the plot starts to really get going, after things start to get ramped up a bit, it does soften, it does get more effective with the humor, but... This is probably the hardest time I've had with the humor in all four of the Bad Boys films. I also didn't really care too much for the villains in this film. Now, the Bad Boys villains, aside from really the last film, has never really been standouts necessarily, but they've always been entertaining. They've always been goofy or humorous. There's something that stands out about them. I didn't find much standout about these villains in this film. You know, the one main guy who's kind of the figurehead that they're going after, who is putting this whole corruption plot together, I thought was just kind of stopping Fuck tough guy. And then the other villain that is kind of kept more secretive throughout the film that is obviously building towards some kind of a reveal, I found that to be a blatantly obvious reveal. Like, I don't really know if anybody else was surprised by that. I don't know how much they really put stock into trying to surprise the audience, but when you have a cast of characters that have been recurring for now four films, and you bring one new guy in, probably going to be him. Which would have been fine if the villainous performance of this character would have been a little bit more entertaining or would have had more of a standout segment to them, but they just don't. They're just kind of a background character. So to me, that was almost like kind of wasted time. This is absolutely a nitpick, and I admit that fully, but it did bug me that they recast Martin Lawrence's wife. She's been the same actress for the first three films. She's never had a huge role aside from the first film, so I don't know why they couldn't get her back, but when they recast her, as soon as they showed her, it just bothered me. The fact that I've been a long-running fan of this franchise, it just bugged the shit out of me. And she's got more of a role in this film that she's had in the past two, so it draws a lot more unneeded attention to it for those of us that are going to be whining about it like me. This is also bordering on nitpick, but they spend quite a bit of time focusing on the age of our two leads here, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, and I can appreciate a couple of jokes at that. I can appreciate having some bit of fun and humor with the fact that they are significantly older now than they were when these movies started, but to me, again, kind of the recurring theme with the, the humor, it just went a little bit too far. There's a whole plot line that kicks off the movie regarding Martin Lawrence's age and his diet and things that he can't do anymore. And then Will Smith's character is having panic attacks the entire movie. And I don't know, there's just something about it where I'm like, I, I know they're older and I know we can have a little bit of fun with that. But when you draw too much attention to it, again, it's too silly. I don't want them to be old. Just keep them bad boys forever. They can be fucking 80. I still want them to kick ass. And the final negative is that, you know, the third film definitely imparted a little bit of Fast and Furious flavor in there to me, but it was just the right amount. It was them learning the correct lessons from Fast and Furious, having that familial element with Will Smith's son and a couple of the ways that they frame action sequences and make things a little bit more over the top and the stylization of it. So I enjoyed the way that they did that. That in the third film. In here, it gets a little too fast and too furious, if you know what I mean. Like, there's much more over-the-top action sequences, which, which some people will like. For me, there was a couple that was stretching it a bit, like where you have Will Smith's son locked in this steel prison cage while this plane has an open hangar door and everything's getting sucked and blown out of it, and this cage that probably weighs a thousand pounds gets flung out and Will Smith just catches it with a rope and holds it. And I was like, dude, this is such a Dominic Toretto moment. Like, no, 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 no. And you can't tell me he's fucking old and having panic attacks in the same movie that he's grasping like 2000 pounds and just holding it there while the plane is sucking it out. Like, I don't know, maybe that was, again, a nitpick. Maybe this is something that shouldn't bother you in a Bad Boys film, but I just don't want these films to continue to go on that path where now they're gonna be superheroes and things are gonna be ridiculous. Like, they've always been over the top. They've always been over the top, but there's been a line that they haven't quite crossed, and to me, they crossed it in this film. Even the way that there's so much of a family element in this one, whether it's Marcus's family or Mike's family or Captain Howard's family. And so everybody that is a major player in the plot of this film 
is family. Again, that didn't bother me near as much as the over-the-top action and superhuman strength stuff, but even that, I'm like, take it easy. Take it easy. But overall, guys, I did enjoy this film. I think that the vast majority of Bad Boys fans will really enjoy this. It's not one of my favorites of the franchise. I don't think that it's near as good as the last one, like a lot of people have claimed, but seems that most people do believe that, so I'm probably gonna be in the minority on this one. It's still fun, it's still got a lot of good action. I still love seeing Will Smith and Martin Lawrence together. It was a really solid time in the theater, just getting a little too silly and stupid for my taste. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed that, please click over here for all my 2024 new release reviews. I'm also going to put my review of Bad Boys for Life up here from about four years ago for you to check out. Be sure to see Sundays for Dogs down in the video description and get your fur baby something they're going to enjoy. Like, share, and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss everything in the future, including a ranking of all four of these films this weekend. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.